company that I founded uh, uh, two years earlier uh, called Technipalago. And uh, I live in uh, one of, on one of the 30,000 islands uh, east of Stockholm in Sweden. And they recently uh, upgraded the number of islands from 25,000 to 30,000 due to new mapping technology. So I have to remember it's now 30,000 islands. islands. Uh, what we do is we do um, custom business applications for small to medium sized uh, businesses. And uh, we, Grails is a perfect framework for, for delivering that uh, on that promise. Um, 90% um, of the customer, uh, customer base is uh, running um, Gradle's applications and we host uh, the um, applications that we develop um, on our own uh, data center or in a data center. And the result of this um, work during these years has, has been, the result is um, a collection of Grail's plugins that we call Great CRM because we do customer relationship management uh, applications. Um, so it's mainly plugins that are focused on um, companies, contacts, organizations, projects and tasks and things like that. And uh, we have different customers are in different industries, um, but uh, they all have common, common uh, requirements. Because if you're a, if you're a um, commercial company, you have customers. Um, you have um, organizations and people working in those organizations. And you have projects to, uh, to, to work on um, with, um, in relation with those customers. And tasks and calendars, you need to get reminders uh, for the tasks. And you have documents. And you need to communicate with your customers. So even even though they are different industries, they all have the same, almost the same requirements uh, regarding uh, the functionality in the system. But copy-paste, and we heard that uh, from uh, uh, yesterday in Bert's uh, talk, that uh, copy-paste is, uh, is a great way to, to uh, share information uh, between different uh, clients. But uh, we don't do that. Uh, uh, there is a much better way to uh, share uh, common functionality between different um, installations, different um, customer applications, and that's, um, of course, the Grails, Grails plugin system. Um, and the Grails plugin system makes it easy to extend the data model of the application, and you can provide the plugin can provide new services and. Uh, static resources and, um, and, and a lot of things uh, to add functionality to uh, an existing uh, application. But you must, if you're, a Grails application is typically uh, traditionally a, a monolith, a big monolith, but uh, if you, uh, um, if you're doing a monolith, you should at least think about uh, separation of concern you should put different um, uh, functionality into several plugins so you don't mix all the functionality in the application or in, in one big plugin. You, just, you should sit down and think and uh, uh, isol isolate functionality into, into plugins because that uh, um, helps you maintain the, maintain the application and uh, it makes it easier to, to test. Uh, you test a separate plugin uh, and you have no relationships with uh, other plugins. And um, working in a single plugin also makes it easy to stay inside the box. Uh, you cannot depend on ad other uh, uh, plugins and, and, and stuff. So it forces a uh, developer to, to focus on just uh, one uh, plugin. Uh, another uh, um, success uh, factor for, for the great CRM plugins is that uh, we keep business logic in a service plugin and then the user interface in, in a separate plugin. So we don't mix, uh, mix uh, services with user interface. It's uh, 
well-known uh, strategy, but uh, it's, it's easy to, to add uh, GSP pages to, to the service plugin. But don't do that. Separate the, the service plugin from the user interface plugin. So that makes it much easier to use the service plugin in other uh, scenarios, in other applications. Maybe um, put uh, the service plugin in a, in a microservice style application and um, maybe you, know, you, wanna, you wanna switch uh, user interface, but keep the service plugin because most of the business logic is in the service plugin. And uh, if you're not allowed to, to have compile time dependencies between plugins, how do you communicate between plugins? Because in, in an example, in our example, we have uh, the uh, uh, calendar plugin that's um, focused on uh, scheduling events uh, in the calendar and triggering alarms when uh, when a reminder is uh, is um, f a reminder for an event. Um, how how um, should that communicate uh, uh, to the to the user? Well, um, if you send um, asynchronous events, just uh, um, an alarm event, then someone, some other plugin or the application can listen to that event and decide what to do. And um, maybe send an email or text message or, or uh, a push message to, to the mobile phone. So don't build uh, that functionality into the um, calendar plugin or the, the task plugin. That just trigger an event when something is uh, is happening, and we're going to go into detail with uh, events. And I think I want to show you how um, um, the, an example of an application, so you get a feeling what I'm what I'm talking about. I'm switching to uh, to uh, to the application. We do like this. Can you see? Make it full screen. This is um, a Grails application, <coughs> and, and I did the create app uh, blank Grails application, and in the build config file, I added. Um, some plugins, and all the great CRM plugins are beginning with uh, CRM. So I added the contact plugin. This is the service um, plugin that contains uh, domain classes for storing companies and contacts and relationships between companies and contacts. And the user interface plugin for, for CRUD operations on, on contacts uh, is in the UI plugin. And content management and core plugins. So here you can see an empty Grails application and then um, mainly two um, um, contact plugins and then the task plugins. Also task management in a service plugin and the task uh, user interface in, in a separate plugin. And with uh, those four plugins, we have a small, uh, a small um, address book where we can find, uh, search all uh, uh, people. There's only uh, two in the database right now. Um, Soren, the uh, awesome organizer. And uh, you can see a, a relation to, uh, to the conference. And uh, if you look at um, uh, myself, we have uh, uh, by uh, myself and the relationship to the company. So that's the, uh, and you, you also have uh, the calendar uh, plugin with, with a user interface that shows a calendar. And um, that uh, event is now, I relabeled it to, to talk, to, to, to fit this uh, demo. And it's related to a uh, speaker, but it, but it could also be related to a project or, or some company or something. So 
This is uh, an, a Grace application with very little logic in, uh, in the application. It's the, the, the plugins that are using or uh, managing the user interface and, and persistence. So, uh, so back to, um, to the slides. Um, we communicate with, with events. Um, so um, there's a built-in support for, for events in, uh, in Spring. It's always been uh, application events um, class in Spring from the beginning. And um, uh, you can use that to, um, to um, create an event when something has happened and, and just publish it. And someone will listen to that event and, and do some work. And, uh, uh, but the built-in um, the applications events are very uh, typed. They are connected to, to it's strong typing. So you, you, have, you get compile time dependencies between uh, uh, plugins if you use the built-in um, application events. Um, and Ivan told us about, uh, showed about um, uh, the Spring integration in an earlier talk, and Spring in integration is uh, very advanced support for, for routing events. Uh, so you can use that in the, in the combination with, um, with the Grails. And uh, Grails 2 uh, includes uh, great event support in the platform core plugin. And we used that uh, a lot uh, in the past. Uh, but the platform core plugin is not maintained uh, anymore, but uh, it still works uh, great for, for both synchronous events and asynchronous events. And uh, events can reply uh, data back to, to the sender. But a new thing is that Grails 3 includes uh, event support uh, out of the box. And it's uh, based on the reactor uh, library. Uh, so you have uh, a uh, plugin, uh, a core plugin in uh, Grails uh, called Grails Events. And so it's included in the distribution. So you have it uh, in every Grails 3 application. But it's confusing because if you, if you search for Grails Events, you may end up in, uh, in another plugin uh, made by uh, Stefan Maldini a few years back. Uh, and it's based on um, reactor, pre an early version of reactor framework. Uh, but this is not the same plugin. Um, the, the new plugin is uh, in uh, Grails core and it's called the plugin Grails events. But um, make sure you, you're looking at the right uh, plugin when you, when you search for things on, on the, in the search engines. Uh, Reactor uh, is a library for a Java library for building uh, reactive uh, uh, applications uh, on the GVM, on the JVM. and um, uh, it, it's, uh, it takes care of a lot of uh, setting up uh, event routing and, and stuff like that. So it's very, it's a great uh, library to use when you need uh, eventing. And now that it's built into Grails, it's even more, uh, it's even easier to to. Uh, send event and listen to events. And the uh, reactor is uh, very, very fast and um, um, can process uh, millions of events uh, uh, per second. Uh, I don't really need that much of uh, throughput in my applications, uh, so I will probably not hit that limit in, uh, in the small to medium-sized businesses uh, we use, uh, we work with. Uh, but it's nice to know that uh, at least if I have uh, some uh, performance problem, it's not in the event framework. And Reactor also implements the reactive streams uh, specification. And that is a, a standard specification that um, other frameworks uh, implement. So there's a, an ACCA implementation and there's a Rat Pack implementation. So you can... You can uh, <coughs> Uh, combine those technologies in the same uh, application and, and uh, uh, send events in a standard uh, way. So Grails 3 have, have this um, event plugin and the event plugin in Grails 3 uh, has e um, a trait called events and that uh, trait is applied to uh, controllers and services in uh, Grails 3. And um, 
That means that every controller <coughs> and service um, class can easy, easily send an event and can also subscribe to events or subscribe or, or, or consume. So consuming events, um, there is an on key method that um, you use to, um, to listen to events. And the key can be a string or it can be uh, um, an object, um, any object uh, actually, or, or uh, also a URI. Um, so you can have a, or a URL. Uh, and even, uh, even a JSON object can be the key. So and more about that later. Um, but to publish events, uh, you use uh, notify and you send, uh, uh <coughs> you specify a key and that that other that consumers are listening on, like a, like a topic in other uh, implementations, and you send the data. But you don't have to send the data; you can just send the key that something is happening. Um, and if you wanna uh, send um, an event and listen for for replies because some consumer is replying data to you, then you use the send and receive uh, method. And then you, have, you supply uh, a callback uh, closure that will be called when the consumer responds to the event. You don't know who will receive the event, but you know that hopefully someone will answer that, uh, listen to that event and reply the result. But that makes it possible to, to uh, um, decouple plugins from each other. They don't, know, they don't have to know about each other, but they can get data from other plugins. And usually you have the uh, application that is the consumer. The application listens for events from, from all the plugins. And the application have knowledge about what this application is about. So it can route events to different plugins. So if there is an alarm event from the scheduler, the task set scheduler, uh, it, can, it can say, okay, it's an alarm, it should be emailed. And then the application can send an event to the, to the email plugin or, or just send the email. So, so the application is the director that um, are mostly consuming events and the plugins are broadcasting events with Notify. But the um, consuming events, uh, you, see the, you see the on uh, method. You need to, uh, that method needs to be called uh, initially when you uh, um, initialize the service. So you must regis register this. S so traditionally you uh, implement uh, uh, initialization bean is if you are in the service you in it, you implement the initialization bean uh, yeah and then implement the method uh, like after property set or something so that method is is uh, guaranteed to be called when your service is injected um, into the system so you know that if you put the on uh, the the um, um, event uh, registration here, if you put it there, you know that it's going to be registered when the service is ready to run. But it, it's kind of awkward to, to have to do that. So there's, a, there's another solution that I think it's better, and that's uh, Spring Boot has um, reactor support built in. It includes the reactor um, integration. Uh, so you have two, uh, mainly two annotations that you can use. And it's the consumer and the selector annotation. And um, if you want to consume an event in, in your Grails uh, service, you put the consumer annotation on the service. We'll see that later. And um, that, that triggers the, the Spring framework to look for methods that are annotated with selector. So the, the, the class is annotated with consumer, and then you annotate each method that should, be re should receive events uh, with the selector annotation. 
And the default selector type is, uh, is object, so usually you have a, a string uh, that is the key, like order created or alarm uh, fired or user logged in, user logged out, something like that in, in, a, in a string. Uh, but you can also have a regular expression to, so you can match on, on, the, on the key to, to catch all the events that comes from uh, Hibernate, for example, or p all persistent events. Or uh, a URI, so you can match on parts of a URI or URL. And even a JSON object, so you can specify, I only want to listen to events that are for customer in this region, in this postal code, <laughs> if it's a JSON document. So uh, that's, the, it needs to, uh, to um, um, look in the, in the JSON part, so it's not, not so efficient, but uh, it's, uh, it's a great uh, possibilities, or there are many possibilities to, to match on different events. So here's an example of, uh, of uh, uh, in this case, we can imagine it's, uh, it's a web, uh, uh, web shop uh, plugin that provides services for, for a web shop. Maybe uh, um, uh, some uh, 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 methods for and domain classes for storing a web order. And this is um, a method that's uh, called when, you, when the order is confirmed. So it looks up the web order, and if it's found, it says, sets uh, the order status to confirmed and saves it, and then notify order confirmed and uh, supplies the order ID as uh, the event uh, payload and also the email address of uh, the customer. And then just render back, thank you for ordering. So that event is now fired away to someone. And this is a, a separate plugin that, that, that don't know about what should be done when an order is uh, confirmed. It's not the responsibility for that plugin to, to know, but the application knows what to do when an order is confirmed. So the application listen to this event. Uh, so my application service is uh, annotated with the consumer and the send confirmation email is uh, annotated with uh, the selector. So the order confirmed event will be filtered to this method. And uh, uh, the event is, uh, is provided in the, in the parameter, and you can extract the event data, the payload, with the get data uh, method. So the get data will contain the uh, email address and uh, the order ID. So we can um, fetch the order and uh, send the confirmation email. But the sender did not know what happened uh, did not know anything about sending emails. And that is how it should be. Should not spread functionality all over the plugins. So. And the regular expressions, uh, you can have an event that filters all the events that are sent to something dot created. Uh, all those events will be filtered into this um, consumer and it will print um, if it was uh, order created it would print uh, order was just created uh, so the uh, nice thing about the event uh, um, the event class is that it contains headers so you can you can create an event and uh, populate the headers with uh, if informa information like uh, what user is this event, on behalf of what user is this event uh, triggered, or a timestamp or other business data that uh, you want to include in all uh, uh, events. Maybe the source of, uh, if you're keep keeping track of, uh, of uh, the, event, the source that uh, uh, started it, the, the chain. And uh, the headers can be extracted in the consumers to and use that information. <clears throat> and if you want to reply uh, data, 
from a consumer back to the, um, to the producer, the one that notified uh, the event. Um, you, you, don't, uh, you don't do, uh, uh, you can't return uh, information, you must uh, reply. Uh, so the um, uh, consumers are usually um, just void uh, methods. And, uh, and then, uh, yeah, this was the sender, yeah. This is uh, a, a, a controller method that sends uh, information, sends an event user list and uh, waits for the reply. So it wanna present uh, on the screen a list of users, maybe a drop down list to select uh, uh, a set of users. Uh, but uh, this um, code is maybe in a plugin that should not know about what is the active list of users in your organization. The plugin should not know about that. It should just, hey, give me a list of active users uh, because I wanna, wanna populate a drop down list uh, with that information. So it sends um, um, the uh, event user.list and it supplies uh, an argument that is department to filter on just users in that department. And there is, um, since this is a response that is going back to the, to the browser, um, we could use uh, asynchronous uh, um, response handling in the servlet 3 uh, um, specification, but uh, this one is, is like blocking. So it's, uh, it's a mix of uh, asynchronous call, but we are blocking and waiting for, for the answer. So this is one way of doing it. Uh, another way is to create a promise instance and uh, give the promise instance to uh, uh, send along the promise instance to the event. And, uh, and, then, and then we can uh, um, continue when the promise is fulfilled, or like when, a, when the promise is uh, uh, have data. But, but let's, uh, yeah. Didn't I have a reply dot data? I don't have an example of uh, the consumer that is replying uh, is uh, is not shown here, but the consumer uh, calls the reply um, method on the event. All events have a reply method. And uh, so the consumer um, populates, um, the, sets the information uh, with the reply. And that's when this uh, closure, the orange uh, closure is called, when the reply is set. And it can get that reply data uh, with the reply.data. There is a problem with, um, with uh, doing this. Uh, I don't know if you spotted that, but uh, in the example of order created, uh, there's a problem with uh, transactions. And if we do uh, um, change the status of uh, uh, the order uh, to confirm and then uh, save uh, uh, the order, this is in a, in a transactional method in a, in a service. So after we uh, um, we checked that uh, the save was uh, okay. We uh, send this event, order confirmed. And uh, we supply the ID of the order. So the consumer uh, gets this event, look at the ID and pulls the order from the database with that ID. And um, um, it was created previously, so it will find the order, but the transaction from the original method here is not yet completed because it's, it's going to be committed at the end of the method. So the event is sent, but the, action, the transaction is not yet completed, not yet committed. So the, the order status is not confirmed when the consumer receives uh, the message. Uh, that's a problem. You need to send the event after the transaction completes. 
So how do you do that? And um, there is no built-in uh, um, support for this um, yet. Um, but hopefully uh, uh, we, can, uh, we can change that. But uh, uh, in Spring 4.2, they, uh, they have uh, um, covered this uh, with um, um, transaction-bound events. And those events do exactly this, uh, solve exactly this problem that uh, um, it fires the event after the transaction completes. But this, the, the built-in event handling in, uh, in uh, Spring is the application's event. It's not the events that are based on the reactor uh, library that Grails are using. So if you're, if you're using that, then you have two event mechanisms in the same application. application. And that's uh, uh, not very great. So there's another uh, um, simple solution, but you would have to do it yourself. But hopefully we can, we can get this into, into Grails. And that would be great. Uh, you, uh, you have a method uh, uh, called, uh, in this case, uh, after commit, where you set up, uh, you re register uh, a listener on the transaction uh, synchronization manager. And this uh, re registration tells, please execute this code after you commit the transaction. So, uh, um, you, say, you notify, you send the event or the created with an with a order ID after the transaction completes or commits. So that's, that's one, uh, one solution of solving this uh, problem. And this can be refactored into uh, a method and um, like notify after transaction or transactional notify, whatever. Um, that you can add in a, in a trait uh, and implement that trait in where you need it in your services. Um, so there is a there is a possibility to to do this uh, um, even today. Uh, and you don't have to wait for the the spring for the two. So. Um, Grails 3, uh, we heard that uh, Grails 3 is a complete uh, uh, rewrite and it's now based on Spring Boot and the Gradle is the build, build system and uh, the product structure, file structure is different. Uh, so uh, the first, uh, the first uh, uh, signals I, I got from, uh, from uh, Graham and, and the guys and Jeff was that, oh, I need to rewrite every plugin and it's going to be going to be a mess but uh, actually it turned out that there's not uh, not that much you need to change when you uh, migrate a plugin it depends on how much of the grails internals that you you uh, uh, accessed in your in your plugins uh, there's a lot of package name differences like the the code house uh, uh, package is gone. It's now uh, org.grails. Uh, so you have to change a lot of imports. Uh, but most, uh, most um, th things that in simple plugins are, are uh, um, easy to migrate. But then that was the first day I was afraid. Then I got, oh, this is easy. Uh, and then when I turned to plugins that were doing some deep s stuff with, uh, with uh, GSP, something, then it got, got uh, messy again. So it depends on the plugins. So some, some plugins was very hard to migrate and some were easy. So like the plugin descriptor that you had in the root of your project is now moved down to SRC main groovy uh, under package name. And um, the publishing of plugins uh, is uh, different. Uh, there, you cannot publish uh, Grails 3 plugins to, uh, to the normal uh, plugin portal, uh, grails.org. Uh, how many of you have uh, official plugins uh, in Grails Central? One or two, yeah. So, so the, the recommended um, uh, way of doing it, doing it now is to uh, publish to uh, 
to Bintray, a repository, your own repository on, on Bintray. Or um, there is also an official repository on, on Bintray uh, for Guelph plugins. But you don't, you, don't do, you don't have to do all the copying uh, of files and changing the file structure yourself. There is, uh, there is uh, already uh, a plugin uh, for that, uh, the Migrate to Grails 3, 3 plugin. Uh, it performs uh, much of the, uh, the hard work of uh, um, converting your, um, your Grails 2 uh, plugin or application to Grails uh, 3. Uh, so it, lo it, it does a, a lot of uh, file copying and changing of, uh, of uh, formats. Uh, and what you do is you, uh, you create an empty Grails 3 application uh, with the same name, probably, as the old uh, application or plugin. And uh, then, um, then you uh, switch to uh, your old uh, environment. Uh, the Grails uh, 2 environment uh, and add in the build config file of the old uh, plugin. Uh, you add the migrate to Grails 3 plugin, uh, the latest version of, uh, of that plugin. And then you run Grails migrate and specify the path to the empty project that you, the, the empty Grails 3 project that you created, a relative path to that uh, directory. And the migrate to uh, Grails 3 plugin will copy all, this, all the source code, all the necessary files from the old project into the new Grails 3 project. Uh, and it will leave uh, files that are not uh, used any longer. So you get a, get a clean Grails 3 project with all the code from the, um, the old uh, plugin or application. But then, of course, you must uh, go in and uh, do other changes. Uh, I don't think it modifies the package names, like um, code house uh, package names. So you still have to do some manual work. But at least this helps uh, with the copying of, uh, of the old, uh, old code. And if you used um, uh, platform core, as, uh, as I did, um, the event, um, sending events and receiving events is not that different uh, if you switch from platform core to the new Grails 3 reactor based uh, events. Publishing events with uh, platform core was uh, with the event method in controllers and services and you specify the namespace uh, with, with the for uh, key and then a topic with um, uh, the top key, and then data with the payload. That was um, platform core events. And the same event with uh, Grails 3 is notify with the key and uh, payload. So it's, you could uh, change that with a pattern matching. And consuming events with uh, platform core was uh, um, you have a listener uh, annotation and uh, the same namespace and topic. So f events was filtered into this method. In consuming events with Grails 3, you annotate the service class with the consumer and then the each method with the selector, selector. So that's also an easy change. So uh, if you're a plugin author, start your migration engines. Uh, there's a lot of plugins out there that are uh, not uh, migrated to Grails 3, and that uh, um, held us back from, from migrating uh, our, our applications because we're relying on, uh, on uh, plugins um, that um, were, were not yet um, migrated. So. Uh, so please uh, start the migration <laughs> so uh, uh, we can all benefit and upgrade to Grails uh, 3 because uh, as you, as you uh, uh, heard the earlier talks from Jeff and, and there's, there's a lot of promise in, in Grails 3 uh, based on Spring Boot. 
And um, the experience I, I have with, uh, with uh, Grail's plugins is this uh, collection of uh, great CRM plugins. They are available in, in Grail Central for everyone to use. And I get uh, one or two questions per week and uh, one or two pull requests per month on the, on the plugins. And we use it for all our customer development, um, custom development. So here you can see the examples of how you um, make plugins that are only focusing on one specific uh, task. The contact plugin for, for contact management and the content for storing documents and the task for, for the calendar, calendar and campaign for, for email campaigns and sales for Salesforce automation and product uh, for products uh, that you sell. And uh, there's a blog plugin. Then it's over 40 plugins, uh, but only half of them, like 20 plugins are available on Grails uh, Central. But it's just a matter of documentation and, and test coverage. <laughs> and, and then we release them because we have no interest in selling those plugins. It's, um, we're selling solutions, so the plugins are open source. You can use them or, or, or check, check the code. Um, so uh, that's uh, it. I was a little early, but uh, you can find more information on uh, greatcrm.github.io. There is um, um, all the plugins are documented there, and um, you can also see my previous talks and demo applications, uh, and also explanation of how we think when we develop plugins. Uh, if you scroll to the bottom, there is a there's um, this uh, discussion about bounded context and how you should think when you develop uh, plugins. And uh, they have the reference to the Migrate to Grails 3 plugin that uh, makes it easy to start your migra migration. So uh, thank you for uh, listening. <laughs> <laughs> Questions? Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. Yep. Uh, even firing and consuming, is that done in the same thread as firing, or is that uh, not the Yeah, the, the question was, is the event uh, consumer running in the same uh, thread as the, as the notification thread? Uh, no, it's, uh, it's a running in a different thread. thread. Yeah. So it's a separate thread that is started to, uh, to run the um, consumer. So therefore, you must. Uh, there's a, another transaction, another thread. So it's not the same thread. Yeah, Re Reactor has uh, different implementations on uh, on how to process uh, the events. One is a single-threaded uh, ring buffer, where it's a single thread that uh, processes all events. Uh, very efficient. And there is also a thread pool uh, implementation that you, so you can configure Reactor um, depending on your need. So if you want a thread pool, you can configure the thread pool uh, um, router or consumer. Uh, yep. Uh, is uh, the event consumed by the first consumer? Uh, uh, yes, it is. Uh, in the default uh, configuration, the first consumer that uh, receives uh, the event consumes the event. So it is not sent to, to multiple consumers. But you can configure that to, to, have a, to use a pass-through router and it will be sent to uh, all, uh, all consumers listening to that uh, event. So you, you can... Uh, you can configure that, and we use that for. For um, if I uh, I have time, I can show you a uh, example of that that collects uh, multiple um, events from multiple consumers. If um, if I find if I search for all my contacts, and then uh, I export, I press the export button here, an event is sent that is uh, uh, to all consumers that provide uh, export layouts for contacts. 
So the namespace is uh, contact, and then it asks for, for, the, for the topic uh, uh, export layouts. So it, it's two different plugins that uh, reply to this event. One is the uh, export to Excel plugin, and the other is, uh, is the application, actually, that uh, uh, responds to this event and say, I have a, a contact list layout uh, that uh, can be used here. And um, the Excel export uh, plugin says, I have an Excel export layout that I can use. So, <coughs> so I select that and uh, I get uh, the Excel uh, export. <coughs> so uh, that's uh, using that multiple, multiple consumers. So the contact uh, plugin that sent the, the event have no knowledge about Excel or uh, printing PDF reports or, or anything like that. It just uh, sends an event, hey, give me some layouts for, for contacts. And all the plugins that are, are, um, support that replies, hey, I have, a, con I have a, a, a layout for contacts. So it's possible. More questions? Yeah. The, so actually, what has been your motivation for choosing this event mechanism as opposed to choosing a, a, a more ordinary event? It's it's the, uh, the 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 separation of uh, plugins that needed a si simple way to to communicate between between plugins between plugins and the uh, application. But you you can also use uh, Spring integration and um, publish. Uh, events to, to uh, channels in Spring integration and published events on the same events on, uh, on a message queue. So um, the, uh, there's no change in the, in the code that notifies. It still, still notifies with the same keys, the same payload, but uh, the consumer can be on another system uh, because it's with Spring integration, you can take that event and, um, and place it on a queue and sent off to another uh, system or a microservice or, or other service. So it's, it's still possible to, to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, if, yeah, I, I see that as a, as a positive thing, <laughs> that the transaction is completed, and then we fire off instead of calling uh, external systems in the middle of a transaction. So, depends on your. No, yeah, that's correct. Uh, event uh, event uh, implementation, yeah. Uh, the reactor one and the, the one that is built into Spring. Uh, the, there's uh, application event, I think the base class is, uh, or the interface is uh, application event in Spring. And that is, uh, that's been built into to many versions of Spring. Uh, that is uh, uh, Spring, um, Spring only thing, and the reactor is a separate uh, library, uh, but Spring also includes uh, uh, integration with the reactor. So it's, we have two different um, systems of dealing with uh, events in, in Spring applications, or Spring Boot applications. No, the reactor library is not part of uh, in, in, uh, in the JDK core, no. It's a, it's a separate library that are, are uh, a Java library. So what one was uh, Grails 3? Uh, Grails 3 uses uh, the reactor uh, implementation. And in Grails 2 and Grails 1, you had the spring um, event system built in because all Spring applications have these uh, application events. 
but I think the the selectors, um, the reactor based with the selectors are superior to the spring, so I really like to use the reactor one. Even though I don't need the performance, I really like the, how reactor uses the selectors. So. Rails 3 uses the reactor, but you still have, if you, can, if you want to use the spring one, it's included, so you, you have both. Okay, thank you.